Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a little leather keychain, just like this right here. Uh, so due to extenuating circumstances, such as a global pandemic, most people are inside more often. Um, so I took this time to learn a craft, and I think that a lot of people would be benefited by learning something. I don't know how to write, how to draw, um, and I learned how to do some leather working. So today I'm going to go over the basic tools on what you can use to get started in leather working, and I'm actually going to show you step by step how to make a nice little keychain. So this little thing is pretty neat. You put it on your keys, uh, show your friends, show your parents, I don't know, whoever's important to you. Um, but it's a neat little trick to have. You never know when you're going to have to use it. Uh, so there we go. So this right here, pretty simple design, but uh, I put in a little initial here. It's for my buddy. Kind of rectangular. It's only about two inches in length, about two inches by one. And uh, it's pretty neat. It's made out of a, I believe this is a two millimeter full grain leather. It's really, really nice leather. I got this from a place called Saddleback Leather. Great place you can get some leather. I got this actually out of a scrap bin, so it's not too big of a deal. Uh, leather isn't as expensive as you think it would be, um, unless you get some really, really high quality stuff like pig skin or some kind of deer skin. Um, so, I'm going to go over some tools of what you can use. So to begin, obviously, you need to have some leather. So this is my type of leather. I usually work with black leather. Uh, you can work with a brown, some come in a green, some in a navy color. On your workspace, you want to have a mat. So this mat has a lot of great diagrams on it. It's got good angles. It's got a little grid system so you can see what you're cutting, where you're cutting, and um, how long things can be. It also protects the surface behind it. So if you're cutting on grandma's kitchen table, uh, you're not going to get yelled at. So um, what else do we have? So we have a simple tool. It's called an awl. Uh, let me get it out. I like to use a skewer. Honestly, a shish kebab skewer works just fine, um, but most people would prefer the actual awl. i got it right here. Comes a little protective sleeve. It's right here. So you can use this to punch holes, score lines. Uh, you can use it. It's helpful in sewing, keep things in place. Uh, hammering back so you can hit away on it without damaging it too much. So you have an awl, okay? So then to cut leather, the bare minimum you would need is just a simple knife. A uh, box cutter would work well for long uh, cuts and material, but for small detail work like what we're going to do today, this right here. It's an X-Acto knife. It's pretty cheap. You can get one on Michael's for like four or five bucks. Not very expensive. Um, these also come with different heads on them. Some of them with a curved tip, others with a straight tip. Um, really depends on what you're trying to use. But yeah, so this is just to cut your leather to do fine detailing work. A ruler would be helpful because you can't just eyeball your straight measurements. Um, so it's good to know that I have mine in metric uh, and I do have a imperial one right here. Americans like to use imperials. I have a few markers and things like that to mark on paper that I like to make my prints out of. Uh, so I use graph paper. So this right here is actually going to be the print we're going to use for the keychain. Um, it's a nice little model. This is exactly how you would make it. So you just fold it over just like so, and there you go. Just like that. We're going to cut that out of leather and sew it together, see how it looks. So, also, we have an edger or a beveler. Uh, there's different names for it. This tool right here, it's got like a forked end on the uh, corner. So what you can do is you take this piece of leather. What you do, you just slide it along the edge of the leather and it rounds that edge off so it's not so harsh. It's really good for uh, really any product that you want to use really with keychains and uh, wallets and things like that. Something you're just going to be handling every day. You don't want a hard edge on it. Um, I use a regular kitchen scissors. You can use it. You can do a lot with this. You'd be surprised. We have our mallet. Uh, so I would prefer a rubber mallet. Never try to use a hard metal surface because uh, you don't want to damage your tools. So I got this at Harbor Freight for, you know, four bucks or whatever. It's really simple. Um, just whatever you need to do. 
Then we also have some shears. These are good to cut corners off of leather pieces. Uh, this is also really good to uh, finish your threads. So when you do end up getting to sew, you can do that pretty quickly. Most leather kits uh, that you buy online will come with sewing needles. Um, most of these will work. I always like the hoop needles. These are really these semicircular ones. These are awesome. Uh, whenever you are trying to cut between two pieces of leather and say you, you have three pieces of leather together but you only need to sew two, this is great because you can get right in between that. So, first thing I would recommend is plan. So you know the old adage, measure twice, cut once. Actually, measure three or four times because once you cut it, it's really hard to get it back. Um, so we have graph paper, just use regular graph paper. Um, if you want something that's a bit firmer, uh, I would recommend getting some cardstock. This right here, I got at Walmart for like $4. Um, pretty awesome. You put your pattern on the back and then line it out with your uh, marker or a pencil or whatnot. And then you can get a nice little firmer piece. It's a little easier to put on leather. So tell you what, that's actually what I'm going to do right now. This right here is the pattern that I'm going to use. Okay, so. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, this piece specifically is exactly six inches long uh, from top to bottom and just uh, one and a half inches wide. Okay, so this is pretty neat, pretty easy to follow along. Uh, and the actual uh, meat of the keychain, I'd say, not the strap, is exactly two inches long. So pretty easy to follow along. So what I'm going to do now, see if I can get this out without tearing it. Come on. And there you go. So this right here is going to be pretty much my base pattern. What you do is you lay it on a piece of leather that you're looking for. I got that entirely. Okay, and there we go. Not exactly clean, but it'll work. So now we put this up here, and there we go. And let's write in what this is used for. This is a nice little keychain. Beautiful. Okay, so now it should, if I put this up against my original pattern, should be identical. Maybe a few imperfections here and there, but that's what we can tool. We can get rid of those imperfections later. We can sand them out. You best believe it works. Okay, so there. That right there, good pattern. Alright, now, best thing to do is always take it on a piece of scrap. Uh, this right here is just the perfect size for me to work on. So now this, since this is a bit firmer, I can actually press against it with my awl or my, uh, my skewer. Um, this isn't uh, as sharp as the metal, so it's not going to leave as much of a cut into it it'll be a little bit softer on that leather so if I want to change something I can I can even rub that leather and then that marking will go away but with an awl if you press too hard it's gonna actually tear the fibers because that's all leather is really it's just skin fibers of a cow Okay. I think I got it all did I get it? Yeah, I did generally Okay, and sometimes you can eyeball the rest, especially if it's straight edge, or if you have a good, good hand. Um, that looks pretty good, that right there. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is I'll probably pass over it one more time with the skewer just to make that a little bit sharper. So I decided this would have been the most productive Thing to learn over our extended stay at home visit. Okay, now, so we've got these markings more set. Okay, it's a little more defined. Okay, there's a little bit of imperfection right there. But that's nothing a little sandpaper can't fix. Okay, so now, get our X Acto knife. This is when you really want to get your. Uh, ruler out. 
Um, what I specifically have, and this is kind of a weird tool to have, but whatever, I have this large metallic rod. It's got some weight to it, steel, um, but what it does is it keeps the leather from moving, and it's really, it's a lot nicer than a ruler. Um, it's just my preference. You can use whatever you want. I don't really care, but uh, that's what I've been using, and it works like a charm. It works just fine. So what you do is you line up your edges, okay? Give her a nice cut, cut against the board like so. This will make sure you get a straight edge, okay? Now we'll do the same thing over here. Line it up, keep it parallel with itself. Okay, we're gonna cut more. So this is gonna get our basic strip. I could probably use this strip for something else, this little piece I'm going to cut off. I don't even know yet. Maybe like some backing to a button or whatever. Or a belt loop or something. Maybe it's some kind of loop, some kind of clasp. I don't know. But anyway, uh, real easy. Real easy. It's not that difficult. All it takes is really practice. That's what a lot of people say um, with really any craft. A thousand hours you get good at anything. Okay, so now, what you see me doing is I'm keeping my knife still, but I'm dragging the leather across because the knife is going to stay in the groove. If I put too much pressure on the knife itself going through the groove, I may slip and go into the leather that I want to keep, so then you're just going to have extra marks that you really don't want to have. Okay, so then we've got this cut right here. Okay, now. Nice piece of scrap, throw that over there, and we're going to do the same thing over here. So this piece isn't going to take very long. I would say this project takes, oh, first time, if this is the first thing you make, I'd say about an hour or so. Not very long. I mean, it, it really simple, really simple, really easy. I love it. Okay, now we're going to cut the ends off. Okay, and there we go. So now, all we're going to do left is cut the inside pieces and the corners right off. I will do the corners, and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part two.